Here we present the case of a mitral valve repair using our transaxillary uh, approach. Uh, so first a brief look to our approach. This is actually uh, an old slide showing our earlier approach for minimal invasive mitral valve surgery, which was endoscopic supported. Uh, our new approach is a direct view approach. Here you can see the only incision made uh, parallel to the anterior axillary line with no additional incisions and here you see how we can visualize uh, the mitral valve. You see the almost invisible incision, so the uh, cosmetic benefits. But these are the greatest advantages you get with this direct view approach. Uh, the mitral valve is near only 7 to 10 centimeters away from the surgeon. It is clearly perpendicular to us, so it is easy to work on thanks also to a perfect alignment between our eyes and hands with no need for endoscopes on the table. Our eyes are in fact the most natural autofocus and auto zoom image uh, stabilizer we can find. So uh, this is why transaxillary approach is so good for direct view. Actually the, the only camera being used is a head camera uh, used to share the work with other operators in the OR and also uh, for case recordings like in the case we, we are about to see. So this is the case of a young man affected by a severe mitral valve regurgitation due to a P2 flail. He had no relevant cardiovascular risk factors apart from hypertension and had a good ventricular function so it was a low risk patient. So though we never use endoscope, in this case we put one uh, to show and compare uh, views between the head camera and the endoscope. We make a triangulation, jugulus, end of the sternum and anterior axillary line and this is where we enter the chest in the fourth intercostal space. Here we pass to the groin and you can see the cannulation of femoral vessels with a Saltinger technique. femoral artery we move then to the chest and this is the 4 cm skin incision we saw before put a soft tissue retractor And here we open the pericardium and we, we position seven pericardial stasis always uh, three anterior and four posterior strongly tied up to the skin aiming to bring the heart as close as possible to the surgeon. This is the CO2 line. We prepare the interator groove. Here you see the transverse sinus put the cardioplegia line and so we're ready to clamp. This is the signet clamp. It's easy to enter the transverse sinus. This is the best clamp here for it does not uh, require additional holds, there is no conflict with superior vena cava and no obstacle with the left atrium retractor. Here we open the left atrium. Retractor, so the left atrium is retracted and then the exposition of the valve is completed always 
with the placement of posterior annular suitors. And on the left here you see the endoscope view and on the right the head camera view. So we pass posterior annular suitors We always go from anterior lateral to uh, posterior medial commissure and this is the huge P2 flail with lot of cords broken. You will mark the prolapsing segment and this is a ruler uh, to get access to the subvalvular apparatus. You see how with this direct view you get superb access to the papillary muscle with a natural 3D view with your eyes. So we place uh, a couple of cords. We usually do figure of eight on the papillary muscle. And sutures are then passed to uh, leaflet segments from lateral to medial. And we bring down the leaflet at the desired level. Uh, we're not locking or using clips, we're just doing a double passage on the leaflet and then we, we pull it down. Water test. Valve looks pretty fine. So we size of the ring. Sizing is based on the surface of anterior leaflet. And this is the ring with passing sitters through it. And the cords are passed uh, through the ring and then we, we sit it down. Time with a core knot. And this is the final result. Closure of the left atrium. Now with the clamp, this is the, the pain, um, pain management microcatheter for painkiller infusion. And the patient is then extubated on the table for in our institution we strongly believe minimally invasive approach always involved anesthesiologists as well. So the cross clamp time was 45 minutes, the CPB time 70 minutes, perfect results at echo with no residual MR and no sum, and the patient was discharged after 5 days. So you saw uh, with this approach how easily you get the marginal valve the great exposition you get with all the advantages 
of a natural 3D view. And also this approach uh, ensure a minimal learning curve and can be used for aortic and tricuspid valve interventions for AF ablation for left appendage management uh, with short operative times and superb cosmetic results, increasing patient satisfaction. So this is why transaxillary direct view approach is a true game changer.